You see, when God sends you, he doesn't send you alone. He sends you with power. When God commissions you, he doesn't commission you to go in your own strength, but he says, go in the strength that you have. I'm with you. What he was really was saying was this, go in the strength that you have. Who and what is the strength that you have? Not your own. I am your strength. I am your support. I am your strong tower. I am your protector. I am your fortress. I, I am the one who sustains you. I am the one uh, who calls you and commissions you and tells you, I will continue to be with you as I was with Moses, as I was with Joshua, so am I going to be with you, Gideon. God saw his weaknesses. But Gideon also saw his own weaknesses. It's amazing to me when God will look at your weaknesses and I look at my own weaknesses, you look at your own weaknesses and we see them from a different perspective. They're the same. Still a weakness. It's still a liability. It's, it's still a frailty. It's still something that, 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 that can be used to, to, to cause damage or to, 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 to falter or to fail at some point. But we look at our weaknesses and we say, well, this will hinder me. This will inhibit me. This will not allow me to do what I need to do. My own frailty, my own weakness will stop me in the process of doing what I'm supposed to do with my life. But God looks at you and says, I see your weaknesses. But what you need to understand is this, is that my strength is about to be made perfect in your weaknesses. I'm going to show up in your weaknesses. I'm going to show up in your frailties. I'm going to show up in your failures. I'm going to show up in that place where you didn't think you could ever get beyond where you are. You didn't think you could ever raise your head again. You didn't think you could ever stand again. But I told you in my word that a righteous man falls seven times when he gets up again and keeps going. I feel like going on. We sang it this morning. Though trials come on every hand, though I fail, though I falter, oh, I feel like going on because God said I can and God said I will. Uh, my grace is sufficient for you. Gideon kept wanting to remind God of his weaknesses and make excuses with his limitations. Failing to understand and failing to see how God could work through him. But God promised to give him the strength that he needed to overcome the opposition. God said, I'll be your help. God said, I'll be your strength. God said, I'll be the deliverer in your life so you can deliver my nation. Ah, Paul said, with the comfort we receive, we comfort one another. With the encouragement we receive, we encouragement, we encourage one another. See, what you get is not, be, is not designed for you to keep. What you get is designed for you to give. You're supposed to be one who gives encouragement and gives strength and help to others and comfort. I heard Mike Murdoch say years ago that the broken become masters at mending. It's you who have been broken, torn, ripped, shredded, decimated, but then mended and put back together by the grace and the mercy and the hand of God who then are called to go out and be deliverers and rescuers of those who are in the condition you were in. Tell somebody it's not just for you to hold on to. Tell them it's for, them, for you to give away. Finally then convinced that God was able to use the weak to confound the strong and the foolish to confound the wise. He laid hold of divine strength and he obeyed the call of God. And if you continue to read the story, you find that he organizes the tribes of Israel and God uses him to develop and to marshal a militia of soldiers who God pairs down to just 300 after thousands because it doesn't take God a lot. He can do something with just a little bit. Little is much when God is in it. You might be little this morning in your own eyes. People may not see you as the great deliverer of your neighborhood or your family, but I came to tell you that if God puts his hand on you, if God anoints you, if God God empowers you, if God strengthens you, if God gives you a word and a command and a commission, guess what? It's going to come to pass and God can use you, little old you. God can use you. Yeah. 
He took God at his word. God said, I will be with you. Am I not sending you? And you will strike all the Midianites down together. Not just some, not a few. You're going to get them all, buddy. I'm using you to take control of everything that I called you to do. He finally took God at his word and he experienced the supernatural power of God in his ministry. Mantled with the Spirit, clothed with the Spirit, anointed by the Spirit, accompanied by the Shekinah glory of God. He moved forward and he was more than a match for Midian. He became the opposer. He became the one who delivered. He became the one who rescued. When he said, when God said through the angel of the Lord, he said, go and deliver Israel. Go and save Israel. That word save there in the Hebrew is the word rescue. There are people who need rescue. You needed rescue one day. Okay, I'm preaching about half of you in here. Uh, uh, You needed rescue one day. And God sent somebody into your life with a word, uh, with a command, with a commission, uh, with an empowerment, with an endowment from on high uh, that spoke into your situation and delivered you and rescued you and saved you out of the pit that you were in. I will never forget the night that a man named Paul Schock, a man of God who is with the Lord right now, worshiping him in glory forever and ever, walked out and precariously stepped off of a platform, came and put his long arm around me, grabbed me, said, God loves you. And I said, I don't believe in God. He said, proof of the fact that God exists is that you're here. You should be dead. God used him to deliver my life, to bring me out of hell, to bring me out of the pit. I was rescued out of the clutches of the enemy. God can use anybody. All you have to do is have the Holy Ghost. I said all you have to do is have the Holy Ghost. Ah, you may not know every single book of the Bible from Genesis to Revolution. But if you got the Holy Ghost, if you got a word... All you need is one word. All you need is one name. His name is Jesus. His name means Savior. His name means Deliverer. His name means Rescuer. His name means the one who can set the captive free. That's all you need is the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And every chain of the enemy will snap. Every bondage will be removed. Every bar will break down. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We read the story of Gideon, but you didn't, you, you, he didn't end there. His, 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 just little, his little ministry didn't stop there. 515 years later, the prophet Isaiah talks about him, and he says in Isaiah 9 and 4, For as in the days of Midian's defeat, Say, as in the days of Midian's defeat, not Midian's victory, not Midian's oppression, not Midian's onslaught, no, Midian's defeat. For as in the days of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, and the rod of their oppressors. You delivered Israel. You delivered Zion. You delivered the children of God. You used Gideon to do it. And I'm still talking about it, Isaiah said. 515 years later, I'm still giving God praise. 515 years later, he said, I'm still going to go ahead and go ahead and tell God. God, tell everybody what God did. I came to tell you this morning that God is going to use you to do something that people will testify years about years from now. He's going to use you. 
I said, he's going to use you. I said, he's going to use you. So tell your number, he is talking to you. Yeah, he's talking about you. Yeah, he's going to use you. You're called of God. You're called of God. You're called of God. You may not have ordination papers from man. You got ordination papers from God. God, God ordained you. God anointed you. God appointed you. I got an ordination certificate on my wall. It's nice. It means that man recognizes what God has done. God called me. God, God empowered me. God called me out of my mother's womb. Amen. Before I was even conceived in my mother's womb, uh, Jeremiah said he knew me. He established me. He ordained me. He appointed me. He formed me for his good purpose uh, and for his glory. I came to tell somebody this morning that you are anointed. You're appointed. You are called. You are ordained of God to be a rescuer of those who are lost, those who are dying, those who are crippled, those who are stricken, those who are blind in their spirit, those who are bound, that you might break under the power of God, the rod of the oppressor. There are people under oppression. There are people who are bound. There are people who are being destroyed even right now, and they're in your sphere of influence, and God is calling you, child of God. Yes, you, man. Yes, you, woman. Yes, you, young person person yes you I don't care what you've done I don't care who you are I don't care how you see yourself God said I'm with you I'm sending you I'm calling you I'm going to use you for my glory now go you're called that same call is on you you're called to rescue those in your sphere of influence. And the good news is this morning is that God has promised to strengthen you. You're not going in your own strength. You're not going in your own wisdom. Your own righteousness is as filthy rags. The enemy doesn't care two bits. He doesn't care two bent pins. He wouldn't give two bent pins about your own righteousness. He doesn't look at your pharisaical attitude and your, your veteranship and say, ooh, that's somebody to be reckoned with. No, but if you got the word of God in your mouth, if you got the anointing of the Holy Ghost on your life, that's what scares him. That's what sends him running. That's what sends him into retreat. When you move forward in the might and the power of the living Christ, full of the power of God, clad with every armor that God has promised you and provided for you, and you step forward in Jesus' name, that's that's when the enemy starts to run. God has promised to strengthen you. God knows all about you. People may not know all about you, but God knows all about you. He knows your weaknesses, He knows your frailties, He knows your failings. He knows your shortcomings. He knows the times that you think the craziest things that you could ever think that have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. He knows all about that too. He knows, sees you do stuff that nobody else knows and sees you do. Can I tell you something this morning? He called you anyway. See, man will disqualify you because of outward appearance. But God says, I look at the heart. 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 I know that there's something inside that person that is dedicated to me and loves me no matter what. I can use David. If I can use David, I can use anybody. If I can use Rahab the whore, I can use anybody. If I can use Peter, a cussing preacher, I can use anybody. If I can use Noah, who got drunk, I can use anybody. Religion said, oh, no, you have to measure up and you have to line up. God said, all you have to do is have a heart that loves me. Have a heart that wants to worship me. I'll deal with the rest of you. Don't worry about that other stuff. I'll deal with that. I'll fix it. I'm the fixer. Man ain't the fixer. I'm the fixer. I'll deal with all your junk. I'll deal with all your stuff. You just surrender your heart to me and let me use you for my glory. I can turn 
a victim into a victor. I can turn somebody who's gone through a test and give them a testimony. I can take your mess and turn it into a message. Oh, God. God wants to use you this morning. I said, God wants to use you this morning. I said, God wants to use you this morning. If I don't say anything else, hear that. God wants to use you this morning. God didn't make a mistake when he called you. I said, God didn't make a mistake when he called you. God makes no mistakes. He didn't look at your life and say, well, 40 years from now, that person's going to really mess up, so I will not call them. No, God said, I've formed you. I've fashioned you. I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. I'm going to deal with everything that's in between. I'm going to perfect you on the way. But on the way, I'm going to get glory out of you. I know what I'm doing. I don't make mistakes. I don't make mistakes. I called you knowing you would fall. I called you knowing your failings. I called you knowing your weaknesses. I could see the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning but I don't make mistakes I called you for a reason for a purpose somebody shout hallelujah in here that just mitigates against every religious thought that man ever had I've seen God pick up men off of the scrap heap I've seen him pick up men and women out of the garbage dumps of life. Pick them up and use them and clean them up a little bit. Sometimes he doesn't even clean them all the way up before he uses them. He's said, I'm going to get glory out of this one just like he is. Stinky, smelly, I'm going to use him anyway. Nasty, I'm going to use him anyway. Messed up, tore up from the floor, I'm going to use her anyway. Because I know what I put inside. I know what I deposited. There's a treasure in you in an earthly vessel. Uh, ah, there's the treasure. There's the resident power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, there's the grace and the mercy of God that's been deposited in the depth of your spirit that nothing can overcome. Don't spend your time making excuses or arguing with God. Gideon wasted his time. Well, I'm, uh, let me go through it. Let me go through my resume. Hold on. Let's deal with this. I'm the weakest. I'm the smallest. My clan ain't nothing. We are nothing. We are the least of these. So, so, so there. Read it. God said, put that stupid thing away. I called you, boy. I'm with you. I'm going to empower you. Go in the strength that you have. Move in my power. Move in my might. Move in my anointing. Raise up an army of deliverers. I'm going to use you to deliver Israel out of the hand of Midian. Don't waste your time arguing with God. That's stupid. That's futile. That's pointless. If God called you, it's because he knows what he's doing. It's a waste of time to argue with him. Don't make excuses. Don't spend your time making excuses or arguing with God. Spend your time doing what God has called you to do. He's identified you. He's called you. He's singled you out. Gideon thought he was hiding from everybody. Ain't nobody going to find me in here. They're expecting me up on the threshing floor. I'm down here in a wine press. Nobody expects me to thresh wheat in a wine press. You're supposed to deal with wine and vineyards and, and vines in a wine press. I'm here in a wine press dealing with wheat. Oh, God, there's a sermon there. I don't have time to preach it. And nobody expects to find me in here. Nobody, I'm here hiding. You ever have a hiding place and you knew nobody could find you? Come on, think back in your little cranium. Go back when you were a little kid. Go on, your own little hiding place. And nobody knew where you were. But God knows where you are. I said, God knows where you are. 
God knows exactly where to find you. You can't hide from God. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I ascend to the heavens, you're there. No matter where I go, I cannot flee from your spirit. God sees everything. He knows exactly where you are. And this morning, you may be, may be trying to hide from your calling. You're hiding in your insecurity. You're hiding behind your past. You're hiding behind your inequities. You're hiding behind your own insecurities and your own failings and your own falterings in your own life. You're hiding behind the mistakes of yesterday. God, you can't find me here because I'm covered up by my junk. God said, no, I know exactly where you are. I'm calling you out of that. I'm calling you out from under it. I'm calling you out of the depths of it so I can raise you up for my glory. God is about to raise up some people in this house for his purposes to be an instrument of rescue. He's sending you to rescue people who are crying out for help. The Bible says Israel was crying out for help and God heard them. There's somebody who's crying out for help right now. Guess what? God heard them and he's sending you. Jude said, we snatch brands out of the burning. You're about to take somebody out of a burning situation. You're about to rescue somebody. You're about to deliver somebody. God has called you, every single person sitting in this room under the sound of my voice. No one ex is exempt. I don't care how old you are. I don't care whether you're man or woman, boy or a girl. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your history is. I don't care what your re reputation is. I don't care what your resume says. I don't care what your station in life is. God has called you. There is a call upon your life to rescue. There's a call on your life to rescue. Will you answer the call this morning? Will you say, yes, God, I'll, I'll, I'll be the rescuer. God, I'll be the deliverer. I'll be the encourager. I, I'll do what you've called me to do. I, I'll go ahead and, and answer the call. I, I understand. I get it. I get it. I get it. There's people who need to hear. 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 There's people who need to know. Oh, God. No matter what. God's called you. Every person in this room knows somebody who's in trouble. Every person in this room knows somebody who doesn't know Jesus. Every person in this room knows somebody who's lost and blind. Under the bondage of the enemy. God wants to use you and someday people will talk about you. They may not mention your name. When Isaiah talked about him... 515 years later, he didn't say, and Gideon delivered. He says, they were delivered out of the hand of Midian. Your, your name may disappear back into obscurity. John said, he, he must increase, so I must decrease, so he can increase. Not about you. You just answer the call this morning, that's all. That's all you need to do. Just answer the call. Just answer the call. Just answer the call. Just answer the, just answer the call. Just be willing to say, yes, God, I'll do it. You'll strengthen me. You'll empower me. You'll enable me. You'll quicken me. You'll anoint me. You'll appoint me. You'll ordain me to do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. In this room this morning, before we close, I would just ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment this morning with me. As God speaks to your heart and God brings people to your mind and your spirit and causes you to understand that you're going places, into situations, you're, you're going into new territory, you're, you're there to take people's lives, people's hearts for the kingdom of God. To rescue, to deliver, to set them free, to give them a word in due season. 
He's going to put a word in your mouth. He's going to put an anointing on your life. And what you say and what you do is going to make a difference in somebody's life. The question is, will you do it? It's not a matter of what God's going to do. It's a matter of what you're going to do. Will you do it this morning? If you'll be willing, if you'll do it, if you'll be obedient, you say, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. It doesn't matter who, where, what, when, how, I'll go. Then just go ahead and lift your hand right where you are. Yes, God. Yes, 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 yes. All over this room. Yes. God's going to use every person in this room with their hand raised. He's going to use you for his glory, for his honor, and for his praise. No matter what comes against you, you're going to do it in Jesus' name. For his glory, for his honor, and for his praise. And God will get the glory. God will get the praise. The kingdom of God will be expanded. The glory of God will be seen throughout the land. Because you answered the call of God to rescue somebody's life. Go ahead and stand to your feet this morning. Come on, sing it with us this morning. I feel like going on, though trials come on every hand. I, I feel like going on. Anybody feel like going on this morning? Come on, lift your hands with me. Open your mouth. Sing it together. I feel like going on.